Since becoming severely ill in 2009, I have seen many of my friends go on hospice care. Some were at the end of life, while others went on the service simply to have access to pain medicine. Unfortunately, in the USA, obtaining pain medicine is next to impossible. Due to strict regulations imposed on medical providers, prescribing pain medicine can lead to a doctor losing his or her medical license. However, if a person is enrolled in hospice care, a person can receive pain medicine with relative ease because the rules and regulations imposed on medical providers is less restrictive. To be enrolled in hospice care, a person's regular doctor and hospice doctor must certify the person has six months or less to live. Since many with chronic medical conditions could die at any moment from complications from their medical ailment, it is not too hard to get a physician to sign off that someone with complex medical issues is at the end of life. Since so many of my friends were on hospice care, I began researching the topic, perhaps I should be on hospice care. However, I quickly discovered if I ever signed up for hospice care, I would most likely be dead within a few days. Hospice care is designed to provide comfort care to a person who has a life-limiting illness. It does not provide active treatment for the medical condition. Moreover, life-extending medical intervention is frowned upon. If a person uses IV nutrition called TPN, many hospice programs will not accept patients on TPN. Programs who do accept TPN patients will often discontinue the TPN once the patient is enrolled. Moreover, IV nutrition needs to be signed off by a doctor at frequent intervals. Hospice doctors may decide to not sign off on the orders. This will stop the patient from receiving TPN. Many hospice programs do accept patients if they use a feeding tube for their nutritional needs. However, once a person starts hospice, most hospice programs will not allow a person to receive a feeding tube. This means if the person does not have a feeding tube prior to enrolling in the hospice program, the person cannot get a feeding tube. Since most people who use IV nutrition do not have feeding tubes, once IV nutrition is discontinued, the patient must sustain his nutritional needs by eating and drinking by mouth. If the person is not able to sustain his needs via eating and drinking by mouth, the person slowly dies from malnutrition and dehydration. I have chronic pancreatitis and use TPN every day. If I went on hospice, there is a chance my TPN would be discontinued. I would be forced to eat by mouth. Eating by mouth causes me to develop pancreatitis attacks. The pain from these attacks is out of this world awful. I'm having a pancreatitis attack. I got up this morning and had a little bit of tea. And now my pancreas is hurting. Uh, oh, I, I'm in so much pain. Oh. The pain from these attacks prevents me from eating and drinking for days and even weeks on end. I would slowly die from not being able to eat and drink if my TPN was discontinued. Moreover, getting a feeding tube is not an option for me. I have had three feeding tubes in the past and all of them have caused significant complications. Infusing nutrition via a feeding tube causes me to develop pancreatitis attacks. Additionally, the last feeding tube I had got tangled in my intestines and caused a bowel obstruction. If I'd be able to stay on my TPN, the next hurdle to clear would be my ventilator. Many hospice programs do not allow people who have a tracheostomy tube to receive mechanical ventilation. 
Once a person is enrolled in the hospice program, a plan is made to disconnect the patient from the ventilator. Some programs simply turn off the ventilator, while others allow for the person to be switched over to non-invasive ventilation. When a person is using mechanical ventilation, the ventilator does the work of breathing. However, with non-invasive ventilation, the person must use his respiratory muscles to breathe. Whichever method is used, both will cause a person who uses invasive ventilation to go into respiratory distress. Sometimes death is immediate, while other times the person struggles to breathe for a few days to a few weeks before he passes away. Before getting a tracheostomy tube and being started on mechanical ventilation, I used a BiPAP machine. I fought through each day trying to breathe. My carbon dioxide levels were extremely high. I had horrible headaches, dizziness, and felt sick to my stomach. I was extremely fatigued, but I could not sleep for more than 30 to 60 minutes before being woken up from having high carbon dioxide levels. It was absolutely one of the worst times of my life. I never want to go through that again. If I ever chose to go on hospice care, it would be a guarantee I would be dead within a week. My respiratory muscles are extremely weak. Once invasive ventilation would be stopped, I would not be able to sustain my breathing needs for very long. It would be an absolutely awful death as I slowly died from suffocation. Perhaps hospice care is right for some people, but for me, a person who uses IV nutrition and a ventilator to breathe, going on hospice care would be a brutal combination of dying from malnutrition, dehydration, and suffocation. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye. While filming my videos, I have to take short breaks because I lose my voice and become very tired. I have to inflate the cuff on my tracheostomy tube, which means I cannot speak. This allows my respiratory muscles to relax and to recover before starting another part of my video. While I rest and recover, I try to do different things, whether it's editing videos or checking social media. Of late, I've been extremely busy. I have not kept up with social media at all. I found on my friend's page on her Facebook that one of our dear friends passed away. I did not know our friend had entered hospice. She simply decided treatments were too much for her and she decided to go off all treatments and simply be placed on high doses of pain medicine to help with all the symptoms she was experiencing because she was no longer receiving IV nutrition and obviously you get very high, very hungry and very tired and so she just decided to go on high doses of, of pain medicine which inevitably killed her. So it's very surreal making a video about hospice and about choices people make and I've always believed that tomorrow there's always a bright future no matter what I'm going through. I'm always so grateful and thankful for everything. I, one of my viewers wrote to me that she absolutely hates her ventilator and that made me really sad because I am grateful for my ventilator. If I would not have received my ventilator seven years ago, I would be dead. No question about that. I would be dead, dead, dead. And although I wish I could live without my ventilator, I am so grateful for my ventilator. It keeps me alive and it helps me just have so much more energy and be able to do things. And I know my life is not real exciting. I spend most of my day in bed, but if I can just simply say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to somebody, I feel as though I've made a difference in their life. So I will continue to fight through everything, all complications, because I truly believe tomorrow there could be a cure, there could be an answer, and there's always always something tomorrow to look forward to. So thanks so much for joining me. Bye.